Welcome back to another SY2 screencast and today we're going to look at the role of interviews in sociological research. And we're going to explore three areas in this screencast. We're going to look at some of the skills that are needed in order to conduct a good interview. We're going to identify the main types of interviews that are used in sociological research. And then we'll spend a bit of time looking at the strengths and weaknesses of using interviews in sociological research. So one of the most important skills that you need to develop uh, when conducting interviews is the ability to create rapport and trust with respondents. So creating rapport is about making people feel at ease uh, and comfortable with the interview situation. So in order to create rapport and trust with your interviewee, with your respondent, it's a good idea to start the interview with some very general questions. And then more specific questions, particularly questions that might be uh, potentially sensitive, uh, they should be left until later on uh, within the interview. Uh, another important uh, skill to think about when you're devising questions is to make sure that you're avoiding the use of leading questions. So leading questions like this one are questions that are directing the respondent uh, towards giving a particular type of answer. And this is obviously a problem because it will undermine uh, the validity of the data that you get. Let's now have a look at the main types of interviews that are used in sociological research. So at one extreme, we've got what we call structured interviews. In a structured interview, what happens in the interview is planned out thoroughly in advance. So in a structured interview, you have a set of identical questions which are asked in exactly the same way with all of your respondents. In other words, this is the most reliable way of conducting interviews. At the other extreme, we've got what we call unstructured interviews. And unstructured interviews are much more like conversations, much more informal. So there's much less planning in advance and the questioning can go in all sorts of directions. Semi-structured interview is the term that we use to describe any other type of interview that is somewhere between these two extremes, that is somewhere between a very structured and a very unstructured interview. So in a semi-structured interview, uh, the interviewer might have some guide questions, but they also have the flexibility to deviate from these if they think it's appropriate. So in a structured interview, you've got a questionnaire uh, that the interviewer uh, reads out to the interviewee, to their respondent. So the advantages and disadvantages of structured interviews are very similar to the issues that we explored uh, in the last screencast, which was specifically on questionnaires. So with a structured interview, the data collection is standardised, so respondents are asked exactly the same questions in exactly the same order, in exactly the same way. So it's relatively easy to compare responses. And also because of this standardisation, compared to other types of interview methods, this is high reliability. It's easy to replicate. You can just get uh, another uh, sample of respondents and ask them exactly the same questions over and over again. And this is a practical method. It's uh, much quicker and easier to conduct and analyse than is the case for unstructured or semi-structured interviews. So this is quite a useful method uh, if you haven't got much time and you want to gather a, a large amount of data. But as with the use of questionnaires in general, uh, administering a questionnaire as a structured interview has certain limitations. So this method may lack validity because you may not get the depth and detail uh, that you would get from a more unstructured method. And obviously this approach lacks flexibility because everything is standardised, because there is uh, an interview schedule that you have to stick to. Uh, you can't deviate from those questions or you can't e ask interesting follow-up questions. And as we saw with the screencast on questionnaires, there might be this issue of meaning as well, that you might ask people the same question, but it might be interpreted in very different ways 
uh, by your interviewees. So at the other extreme, we have what we call an unstructured interview. And this is less directed. This is much more like uh, a conversation. And the idea with an unstructured interview is, although you might have some topics that you want to discuss, and you might have made a note of those, uh, you won't have uh, a series of pre-planned questions. And a really good example of somebody who makes use of unstructured interviews is the BBC documentary filmmaker Louis Theroux. And if you've not watched any of his work, I would encourage you to go on YouTube and have a look at his interviewing style. Okay, The technique that he uses to interview his subjects, I think, could be characterised as an unstructured interview. So his interviews are very uh, informal and conversational in style, and he tries to get under the skin of his subjects. And uh, to do that, uh, he needs to sympathise and empathise with them and suspend his disbelief. And I think he is very good at practising what Max Weber would call Verstehen. And in class, we'll look at an extract of a, a really interesting unstructured interview that Theroux uh, carried out when he was studying the prison system in America. Now, these more informal, conversational styles of interviews that we call unstructured interviews have certain advantages. Uh, you're going to get much more validity and depth uh, with an unstructured interview. Um, you're also going to get a better understanding of things from the respondent's point of view, back to this idea of Vishdayan. And because you don't have to stick to uh, a pre-planned schedule, you can get people to elaborate on their answers. You can ask interesting follow-up questions. So there's also uh, a lot of scope for flexibility, which can lead to the development of new ideas. So if you want rich, qualitative data, this is a much better approach than structured interviews. There are, of course, limitations, though, with this method. It is less standardised, so if you're wanting to compare uh, responses between uh, your interviewees, that's much more difficult. Uh, it's less reliable. It's not a method that can be uh, replicated. The issue of transparency, I'll, I'll mention in a moment, uh, in relation to something called the imposition problem. And then also, this is a method that's much more time-consuming and therefore more expensive. It's not just time-consuming to actually do the interviews, to actually then transcribe the interviews and analyse them and post-code your data is also a very time-consuming process. Now, on the issue of transparency, I want to mention uh, something that I discussed briefly in the last screencast called the imposition problem. So in the last screencast, I argued that questionnaires uh, risk what has been called the imposition problem. And that this referred to the risk that the researcher, uh, when asking questions, might be imposing their own views on the people being researched, uh, rather than getting back what they really think. In other words, in questionnaire research, it's the researcher who determines uh, the range of questions to be asked, and also, if it's closed questions, the range of answers which are appropriate for each question. And therefore, the subject's response is limited to ticking boxes, uh, agree and disagreeing, and so on. And the end result is, of this is that the evidence is necessarily couched in the concepts and variables chosen by the researcher, uh, with the result that only a selection of the subject's own ideas might actually get across in the data. But there's also the risk of an imposition problem when it comes to qualitative research methods, such as unstructured interviews. So if we think about an unstructured interview, when you transcribe uh, what your interviewee has actually said, when you actually look at all of that interview data, the transcription might go on for many, many pages. But of course, what you actually see in the final research report is just a small fragment of that data that you actually collected. And the danger here, potentially, is that the researcher will select uh, fragments of data 
that fit with their own views, that fit with their own uh, preferred theories and conceptual um, framework. And the end result um, is that only a selection of the respondents' own ideas uh, might actually get across in the final research report, that the researcher, either consciously or unconsciously, might be selecting data that fits with their own preconceptions. OK, we've nearly finished, but I just want to say something about some of the limitations of all types of interviews. So structured, unstructured and semi-structured interviews have some common weaknesses. So unlike self-completion questionnaires where people have a degree of anonymity, uh, with an interview you're speaking face to face to an interviewer. And there's always the possibility of an interview effect, an interviewer bias. And this might lead uh, interviewees to give answers that are the socially desirable ones or the socially expected ones uh, rather than are answering questions honestly. And also compared to observational research, there is a danger that the data might lack ecological validity. Um, we're relying on people's accounts of their behaviour. Interviews cannot tell us how people uh, really behave. Uh, to gain that kind of insight, we would need to do some observational research.